you're, what's your role in the campaign right now? I have a role in the campaign, right? So you're not so doing any more question. work with the campaign? Her campaign? I'm not doing work with the campaign. Obviously, I am. I'm still a boy, right? Yeah, you're still a part of it? Am I still a boy with it? Yeah. Yes. So obviously, I'm going to work with it. I don't have a role in the campaign, except I work for the campaign. Remember, he was hired for his brawn. Now, Bush hired a different bodyguard who primetime doesn't believe she's sleeping with. He moonlights as her spiritual guru. He's an anti-Semitic wizard who goes by the name Aha. Aha claims to be a trillion years old, and he has a very special skill set. I'm going to take you in the book of Proverbs and show you how to make lightning touch what you want it to touch and burn some down. I got a chant in the Torah that, that makes fire out of nothing. I got a sewer in there that make tornadoes. Flat out. That's how I learned how to make tornadoes. That's my science. I know how to manipulate weather. Mm. And Bush paid Aha $165,000. And Bush has only been in office for three years, and she spent almost a million bucks on bodyguards. Remember, this isn't Whitney Houston. This is Corey Bush who feels she deserves the protection you don't. Bush proposed defunding the police. You would rather me die? Is that what you want to see? First reaction is, I mean, how come, you know, you got security money? And look, I want every member of Congress to be safe. Uh, let me be first say that. But you're spending security money. I mean, I don't have security money. I'm not spending it. I know a lot of my colleagues don't, uh, male or female. Uh, that's number one. Number two, again, like you said, the rules are good for everybody else, but not for her. She wants to be protected at all time, but she's leaving so many of her fellow citizens uh, basically at the, at, the, at the lurch of criminals where there's no police around. Third part is, you know, they're quick to try to defame President Trump on so many of these trumped up charges. Um, meanwhile, mishandling of funds to the point where the Department of Justice yeah. is having to investigate a Democrat Wait. official. All right, guys, so we got to follow up on what is probably my favorite story in the media today, which is about woke squad member, Congresswoman Miss Cori Bush, who cannot make an argument for a policy or piece of legislation without boohoo, whining, and crying white supremacy, okay? And this race hustler, the number one race hustler in Congress, is currently under DOJ investigation for alleged misuse of campaign funds to pay her security guard, Mr. Courtney Merritt, who she was in a relationship with, okay? She was getting her cheeks clapped by this guy. She eventually got married to the guy, and now she's under investigation for paying this guy campaign funds to do security for her, even though he wasn't qualified, right? He was not licensed uh, in St. Louis, Missouri to be a security guard. He's not licensed to be a security guard in Washington, D.C., so technically he was breaking the law. She's funneling campaign funds to benefit herself personally, clear and obvious corruption, um, and again, this is similar to the allegation against Miss Fanny Pack Willis, who was getting her fanny packed by uh, Mr. Nathan Wade, allegedly, okay, as she's paying him hundreds of thousands of taxpayer dollars. Now, again, this is interesting to me because it seems like we have a lot of black women in politics that are tricking, right? They're tricking off on men that I otherwise think they would not be able to get okay i'm just saying right in the case of miss fanny pack willis and nathan wade um i don't think a million dollars is enough to pay me to um you know be with somebody like fanny willis right to be seen with her in public to travel around with her and to sleep with her million dollars is not enough and for damn sure when it comes to cory bush 100k ain't nowhere near enough for me to be in a relationship with this woman, it ain't happening. Ain't no amount of money in the world that you can pay me to get married or to be in a relationship with this woman, okay? It, it ain't happening, right? It ain't happening. It ain't worth it. There's just some things in life that just can't be bought, right? Like my soul, right? Can't be bought, okay? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, again, these guys, um, you know, hey, at the end of the day, get your money, but still, you know, I, I just think that there are some things that are just not worth it, right? So with that being said, uh, we have to talk about Cori Bush, who 
um, is Boohoo Wan and crying racism and blaming people on the right for why she allegedly was misusing campaign funds <laughs> to pay her then fiance uh, to be security. Take a look. I hold myself, my campaign, and my position to the highest levels of integrity. I also believe in transparency, which is why I can confirm that the Department of Justice is reviewing my campaign spending on security services. We are fully cooperating with this investigation, and I would like to take this opportunity to outline the facts and the truth. Since before I was sworn into office, I have endured relentless threats to my physical safety and life. As a rank and file member of Congress, I am not entitled to personal protection by the House and instead have used campaign funds as permissible to retain security services. I have not used any federal tax dollars for personal security services. Any reporting that I have used funds for personal, secur for personal security is simply false. In recent months, right-wing organizations have lodged baseless complaints against me, peddling notions that I have misused campaign funds to pay for personal security services. That simply is not true. I have complied with all applicable, law, applicable laws and House rules and will continue to prioritize the rules that govern us as federal elected officials. In particular, the nature of these allegations have been around my husband's role on the campaign. In accordance with all applicable uh, rules, I retained my husband as part of my security team to provide security services because he has had extensive experience in this area and is able to provide the necessary services at or, ab or below fair market rate. These frivolous complaints have resulted in a number of investigations, some of which are still ongoing. The Federal Election Commission and the House Committee on Ethics are currently reviewing the matter, as is the Department of Justice. We are fully cooperating in all these pending investigations. In September of last year, 2023, after conducting a month-long investigation, the Office of Congressional Ethics found no wrongdoing and voted unanimously to dismiss the case. I look forward to this same outcome from all impending investigations. And I am under no illusion that these right-wing organizations will stop politicizing and pursuing efforts to attack me and the work that the people of St. Louis sent me to Congress to do to lead boldly, to legislate change my constituents can feel, and to save lives. Yeah, so you see now you heard that, okay? It's the right's fault, right? It's the right-wing organizations that are the reason why Cori Bush decided to pay her lover who was not licensed, okay? So he is doing a job that he's not licensed to do. He's not qualified to do. Uh, she's paying him with campaign funds, which, again, you're not supposed to do. Um, it's right-wing organizations fault right it's not her fault that she made a decision to do that again accountability seems to be something that a lot of these people are allergic to okay but again what i find to be hilarious about this is that all these so-called woke revolutionaries especially the woke black women right like for example uh the former leader of uh blm patrice colors um they love using donations right to pay for security despite the fact that they want to defund the police. They don't believe in security for other people, but they believe in having adequate security for themselves, right? In the form of paying their family members, extravagant amounts of money to do jobs that they're not qualified for so that they can ultimately benefit from the money that they're paying their family members. Again, this is clear and overt corruption in your face, right? And you have some members of the GOP that have spoken out about this investigation into Cory Bush, like for example, Representative Troy Nails, and uh, he really did not hold back when it came to his opinion on Cory Bush in this situation. Take a look. He doesn't even support the police, but the idea to pay her thug uh, money to try to help protect her this and that for what? Maybe if she wouldn't be so loud all the time, maybe she wouldn't be getting threats. Are you saying she deserves to be threatened? No, what I'm saying is, is that when you're out there talking the way she does, I, I'm surprised that people are probably pretty upset because she's a pretty radical. She's pretty radical. And maybe she should tone it down a little bit. Yeah, so you see, now you heard that. Now, a lot of people may find what Mr. 
Nails said to be controversial. I just find it to be good advice, to be quite honest with you. I mean, he's giving her some very good advice, like running around calling everybody you disagree with a white supremacist. Uh, it's probably not a good idea, right? Probably not a good idea, okay? You're not going to make friends smearing everybody as a racist uh, simply because they disagree with you politically. Hey, maybe you shouldn't talk so much, okay? Because I personally think that Cori Bush's mouth is the reason why uh, Democrats decided to pull her card, okay? Because it's funny how she's blaming the right for what is happening to her when the DOJ is ran by... Um, Mary Garland, right? Somebody that was appointed by Joe Biden, right? That's Biden's DOJ. And Biden has weaponized his DOJ even against Democrats uh, if they happen to disagree with him on certain issues. Like, for example, when you look at Eric Adams, Eric Adams starts speaking out about the border. Hey, FBI showing up to this guy's, you know, uh, campaign fundraiser's house and shaking him down on the streets of New York City, okay? They're investigating... Eric Adams, because he was speaking out too much on the border. And Cori Bush has been speaking out against Biden and his agenda, you know, when it comes to foreign policy. And, uh, you know, I think that that probably has something to do with it, right? To be quite honest with you. So I, I definitely think that being loud and talking too much is probably part of the reason why she got her car pulled. Again, which, you know, goes to show that a lot of these members of Congress and these elected officials in general, they have a lot of dirt in their closet or skeletons in their closet. And what happens is, is that as long as they stay in line, um, nobody cares, right? But as soon as they fall out of line, right, their car gets pulled and then their skeletons get exposed. I really believe that that's what's happening to uh, Cori Bush here, okay? Going into uh, campaign season, uh, she is facing a challenge in her re-election campaign. So again, this is kind of a big, big, big deal. It seems to me that Democrats have decided that she can no longer be... Uh, a part of the team, okay? So with that being said, uh, Cori Bush has responded to Representative uh, Troy Nails, and she's upset. She's pissed. She says, um, Rep. Troy Nails just called my husband a black man, an army veteran, a thug, and I'm the loud black woman who needs to be silent in order to be safe from violence or else this is the kind of rhetoric that endangers black lives. He must apologize. Well, why must he apologize? You run around calling people like President Trump a white supremacist. How does calling your husband a thug and, you know, hey, you know, the guy technically is breaking the law, right, by uh, acting as security when um, he's not licensed to. So, you know, hey, maybe the thug label fits, maybe it doesn't. But regardless, um, when you label people on the right as thugs or white supremacists, even though they're not. That's fair game. But when somebody calls your husband a thug, oh, you racism, he's so racist. He's telling a black woman that she's being too loud. <laughs> right. Again, it's amazing how these people love pulling the victimhood card when they are the same people who love to label people and call people names that don't fit. Right. They love doing that. Again, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, then you have Ilhan Omar who jumped in, who said, the loud black woman trope is racist and tired. The congressman should apologize and all members of Congress should condemn him. No one in our government deserves to be threatened regardless uh, how loud they advocate for their positions and blaming the victim of harassment and threats cannot be condoned. Well, I mean, look, here's, here's the thing. Uh, Cory Bush, I don't believe, is under any more harassment or threats than the average congressperson right and she spends more money on security than the average congressperson even though i don't believe that she's necessarily um you know under more harassment or threats that's not to say that she doesn't face harassment or threats and clearly and obviously that's wrong but representative uh nails did not threaten her he's just saying that hey if you feel like your life is in danger then maybe just maybe uh you should tone it down right maybe you should check your rhetoric, right, and stop pissing people off, okay, if you feel like your life is in danger, okay, I mean, you know, I think that he's giving her good advice, even though I don't necessarily believe that her life is in danger any more than the average Congress member, uh, but I think that she uses this uh, victimhood card to uh, justify paying her friends and family to be security for her, even though they're not licensed or qualified to do so, 
and to funnel the money back to herself to personally benefit from it, right? So to me, the, oh, I'm a black woman, therefore I'm in danger card, uh, that's just a shield, right? That is to shield her from criticism of how she's spending her campaign funds on security, right? Which is clearly hypocritical because she uh, believes in defunding the police and corrupt because she's using her money to pay people who she's connected to uh, as family members uh, and friends to do something that they're not licensed to do. So with that being said, uh, I actually want to play this clip of this uh, legal expert, uh, Miss Carrie Urban, on Fox News discussing this probe into Miss Cori Bush. Just Justice Department uh, would appear to disagree with her. Yeah, I, again, I'm curious to know what triggered this investigation exactly. She, you know, she mentioned that she was cleared by this Congressional Ethics Board wrongdoing, or at least they recommended that she be cleared. I, I do think that perhaps a problem for her is that, uh, based on um, our own Fox News digital reporting, this uh, her now husband didn't have a license for a, to be a security guard in St. Louis, apparently here in Washington, D.C. as well. So is this something where he didn't check the box and they're looking into this because she made these payments for him, uh, to him rather? But again, as I was mentioning earlier, John, I do think that going after Cori Bush actually helps Joe Biden because mm -hmm. it sends a message to her and the other mes members of the squad to get in line, especially with respect to police and Israel in this election year. So it's... <laughs> Even Fox News can see what's going on, bruh. Even Fox News can see it, okay? It's plain as day what's happening here, okay? Clearly, the woman was corrupt, right? And they knew it, but they, they held this card until it was time to get her in line on certain issues, right? And that's typically how they do it. It's interesting. So, I mean, but the allegation that you're making is that this is a purely political move by the DOJ. No, I don't think it's purely political, but I do think that it's an interesting decision by the Department of Justice. To do it's not purely political, but you can't ignore the obvious political aspect to it in the context of the timing of it, right? Because usually in a situation like this, they would give a Congress member leeway, right? They would give them the benefit of the doubt and say, you know, it looks like you're breaking the rules, but eh, it's borderline, okay? Because they have discretion in regards to paying family members with campaign funds as long as they're providing a bona fide service. So what happens is, is that now all of a sudden, when again, you're out of line on certain issues politically, and they want to get you back in line, what they do is say, well, we're not going to give you the benefit of the doubt anymore on something that you're doing that could be breaking a rule. So therefore, we're going to trigger an investigation into it just to send you a message, right? And I think that's what's happening here. Again, that's not to say that she didn't commit any wrongdoing. She, I think that she did. I think it's obvious that she did. My argument is that the reason why they actually care is political. Not so much that they actually care that she's doing wrong. Because, again, they do get leeway when it comes to this type of stuff. For the most part, uh, they will look away from it. But whether or not they turn their head and just ignore it, again, it's, it's political. And that's typically how this stuff kind of goes down do this. And again, we don't know. The DOJ is not commenting, so we don't know all that it entails. Mm -hmm. They've just issued a, a grand jury subpoena for documents. She's, uh, Cori Bush has confirmed what it's about. Um, you know, when you look at the payments that she did make to her now husband, it doesn't strike me as unusually large. Now, overall, mm -hmm. in the aggregate... But she she did, said it was at or below fair market. Right. Value. And in the aggregate, she has spent, objectively, a tremendous amount of money on security, which does strike me as a bit unusual, which is maybe what triggered them looking into this in the first place, since it strikes me as a bit unusual for someone to be spending this much money, the campaign funds, on, um, on security detail. But nonetheless, you always have to ask yourselves in Washington, D.C., especially mm. in an election year, is there anything else at play here? We just don't know, so we'll see. All right, maybe they didn't like it when she said, suck it up. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Great to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, so again... Um, fascinating, right? Comments from, uh, the legal expert on Fox news. Um, I don't think, uh, I'm too far off in regards to my theory about what's going on here. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, um, regardless, Cori Bush is blaming everybody but herself, right? Ultimately at the end of the day, it's her fault for being dirty enough to have her card pulled by the DOJ in the first place. I mean, like, come on, clearly and obviously you're paying your, you know, husband or whatever your lover, uh, to personally benefit from campaign funds is right there in your face. OK, so you can't be mad at the so-called right wing media uh, or right wing organizations for simply uh, talking about what 
clearly and obviously is corruption, right? And if you're going to blame anybody for why you're under investigation, blame Biden, right? Blame your handler, okay? Blame Democrats, okay? Because they're the ones that are trying to get you in line. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.